Hi everyone. Today, I'll be giving an overview and demoing a feature that AWS Transfer Family launched at AWS Storage Day 2021 for using Transfer Family with low code or no code workflows for managed file transfer. AWS Transfer Family is a secure, fully managed transfer service that enables you to transfer files into and out of Amazon Storage over SFTP, FTPS, or FTP. AWS Transfer Family supports landing data into and retrieving data from Amazon S3 and Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS. With just a few clicks in the AWS Transfer Family console, customers are able to select one or more protocols for their users to interface with, configure Amazon S3 buckets or EFS to store the transfer data, and set up end user authentication by either importing existing end user credentials or integrating with an identity provider. Your end users can continue transferring files using existing clients, such as FileZilla, WinSCP, Cyberduck, and OpenSSH, and the data will be stored in S3 or EFS. After receiving files, you often need to process your data prior to it being consumed by downstream systems. You may view this as post-processing in terms of file ingestion into your AWS Transfer Family Server, or pre-processing if you're thinking in terms of what will be consuming the data, such as your data lake. Until today, for S3, customers have been required to use S3 event notifications to invoke and orchestrate downstream processing. And for EFS, to manage workflows downstream from their AWS Transfer Family Server, customers have needed a file system listener against their EFS file system. AWS Transfer Family now supports managed workflows for file processing, which enables you to create, automate, and monitor your file transfers using low-code or no-code automation. This allows you to orchestrate a linear sequence of processing steps as a part of a workflow, which can prepare data for analytics and insights or other business purposes. It's easy to customize. You can use custom steps for any variety of use cases, such as file validation, encryption and decryption, compression or extraction, security scanning, filtering content, notifications, among other use cases. Transfer Family Managed Workflows also supports a library of commonly used operations that you can use individually or chain together. As of today, Transfer Family supports copy, tag, and delete built-in workflow steps. Managed Workflows allows you to coordinate all necessary steps required for file processing while having end-to-end -end visibility and auditing through AWS Transfer Family's console and CloudWatch logs. In this video, I'll show you how to set up two Transfer Family Managed Workflows and then show them in action. The first demo uses the copy and tag workflow steps for a record archival scenario, followed by a demo where we have an AWS Lambda function which extracts and loads data out of a CSV and then deletes the file. I plan to go step by step and will show the processing through CloudWatch logs along the way. In the first demo, I'll cover a record archival scenario. First, we'll set up a step to copy new records to a new bucket under a transfer prefix. Then we'll set a step to tag the copied record with the key of archive and the value of yes. This scenario is useful if a business wants to retain any files sent to them by a business partner for retention and compliance. So note that the S3 bucket has object versioning enabled since we want to archive both writes and overwrites, and we have an S3 lifecycle policy set to archive objects that are tagged. I'm starting the demos with the assumption that you already have a transfer family server and user set up. If you want to follow along and are setting yours up for the first time, there's another transfer family demo in the description, which walks through this step by step. For this demo, I already have a user on a transfer family server with an SFTP interface backed by S3. So first, we'll navigate to the AWS Transfer Family console and select Workflows. We'll see that there are no workflows created yet, and we'll select Create Workflow. And we'll describe that workflow as Demo 1. Now we can add our steps. You can see that we have Copy, Tag, Delete, and Custom Lambda step types. For this demo, the first one we'll be using is copying the file. We'll name the step copy to archive. We'll select the bucket where we want to write our copy and the destination key prefix. Don't forget the forward slash since we want to retain the object name. And for this use case, we want to overwrite existing objects since we want to archive all files sent to us for compliance. We'll review the information and create our step and then we'll add a second step for tagging. We'll name it tag to archive. And once copied, we wanna tag our copied file with a key of archive and a value of yes. And once we have both steps, 
we'll want to create our workflow. To associate the workflow with your server, you navigate to Servers, select your AWS Transfer Family Server, scroll down to Additional Details, and edit your server. You scroll down to Post Upload Processing, and I'm selecting my Demo 1 workflow and a workflow execution role. Note that the workflow execution IAM role must have a trust relationship for transfer.amazonaws.com. For authorization, an S3 back transfer family server grants permissions for copy, tag, and delete actions through S3 IAM policy actions. For an EFS back transfer family server, the execution role must have POSIX permissions to the file or directory. For custom APIs, the execution role requires permissions to invoke the Lambda function. Next, we'll save the change to our server. The next thing we'll do is navigate to our terminal, log in to our SFTP server, upload a file, and then see the workflow execute. So here from the command line, we're logging into it, and we're putting an object onto S3. When we navigate to CloudWatch logs, I can see that my workflow has already been executed and completed, which are the first and last logs emitted. Between them, you can also see both steps completed in order. First, you can see details about the copy step. You can see the bucket, key, the step type was copy, the step name was copy to archive, and the server information. You can also see the same details for the tagging step. Next, if you navigate to the new records S3 bucket, we're able to see that the record was uploaded to the user's home directory. Also in the archive records S3 bucket, we're able to see that it was put into the archive records bucket. And we can also see that the object was tagged for archive. Workflows are immutable. So to adjust your workflow, you need to create a new workflow to associate to your server. You can declare your workflows as JSON and then use the Create Workflow API over the AWS CLI or SDKs. Here's the same workflow we created just to find as JSON. In demo two, I'll cover a data extraction scenario. First, we'll create a custom step using an AWS Lambda function to confirm that the file extension CSV and extract and load the CSV data. Then we'll set a step to delete the object once we have the data loaded. I'll also set an exception handler step that we'll review. For demo two, we wanna update the server from using a demo one workflow to a demo two workflow. So first we'll need to create the demo two workflow. We'll select create workflow and add a description. We need to create a step that uses our Lambda function. And this Lambda function validates that the file type is CSV, extracts the CSV content and loads it into DynamoDB, and then sends a notification whether or not it was successful. So we'll choose the Lambda function that we've already imported, which I'll show. We then create a delete step to delete the file now that we've extracted the data from it. We'll also create an exception handler step, which is the second Lambda function, which will alert that the workflow execution failed. When you're doing this as code, the create workflow API would reference two JSON files, passes arguments for steps and on exception steps. We'll associate the new workflow with our existing server. So we navigate to our server, scroll down to additional details, and select edit. When we scroll down to post upload processing, we can select our new workflow. And we're going to use the transfer workflow execution rule. This rule also has a trust policy with AWS transfer and authorization to invoke our Lambda functions and delete S3 objects in our bucket prefix. So next, we'll hit save and the server will update. So next, we'll navigate to our DynamoDB table where we can scan our table and see that we have no items in the table yet. So next, we'll log into our SFTP server and upload a simple CSV file, which has three rows for this example. So we log in and we'll put the object to S3. We 
we can then see the workflow execution in CloudWatch logs almost immediately. So similar to demo one's workflow execution, we can see the execution started and execution completed logs are the first and last logs admitted. Also, the main difference is when there is a custom step, we can see a custom step invoked log. All step started events are after the previous step completed event since the workflow executes in a linear fashion. We can also inspect the logs for the Lambda function execution. Here we can see the responses for uploading the three rows into DynamoDB. And if we go back to DynamoDB and scan our table, three items now return. Within our new records Amazon S3 bucket, we can refresh and see that our demo2.csv object does not exist, in this case because of the delete step. So we still only have demo1.csv. I want to go through the requirements for a Lambda function associated with a custom step. The Lambda function's IAM role must be allowed to perform whichever IAM actions you require based on your custom logic. The most important thing is that the send workflow step state method, which we define in the highlighted function, gets a status of success with all of the proper workflow metadata. This is how the workflow knows that the step has been completed successfully. If your Lambda times out in getting a response back to this API, or if your Lambda reports back a failure instead of success, the next step is the exception handler. For this Lambda function within the Lambda handler, we're extracting properties from the workflow event, implementing our custom logic, and then we call our send step state function. This is an example JSON test event and the structure that your Lambda would receive it from the workflow orchestrator. You have the workflow ID, execution ID, user, server, and file location structure, which depends on if it's from S3 or EFS. Here you can see the bucket, key, and other object metadata associated with the S3 object. Similar to the other custom Lambda step, for the exception handler step to complete, you need to report back success to the workflow with the send workflow step state method. For my exception handler, I'm sending an SNS message that our workflow failed for a user and file with the metadata of that event. Then we report back success to the workflow. To recap, AWS Transfer Family Managed Workflows is a new feature which allows you to orchestrate file processing workflows. It's generally available today and easy to get started. All Transfer Family server types are supported, so customers no longer need to manage their own workflow orchestration using event notifications or file system listeners. Transfer Family provides a set of commonly used operations as workflow step types. There is also the ability to extend the functionality using AWS Lambda integration with custom steps. Your organization can have visibility into your workflow executions with CloudWatch logs. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned more about AWS Transfer Family and Managed Workflows. Have a great day.